used to work every day when they first bought it. We made it one piece. Hello fellow hot rodding brotherhood. Welcome back to the shop. This is Mad Rat Garage. I'm Corey and this is my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> This week, I'm going to introduce you to the new project in the shop we're going to be working on over the course of several weeks, I guess. Um, with no further ado, let me introduce you to Maz Mad, our 1956 Chevy Nomad that my mom used to own that I bought six or seven years ago and uh, took to Indiana. Didn't do much with it, needed some updating, needed some uh, freshening up, and uh, when I moved back to Florida, I brought it back with me. And let's go ahead and uh, show you what it took to get it over here and uh, give you a little introduction and in and out of what we're working with. Again, 1956 Chevy Nomad, we're calling Mozmad. See the tire? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yep. our mother this is her car she drove this to work every day when they first bought it I know <laughs> now my brother owns it all right guys new project this is uh i-56 nomad been over here at my parents' house for the last couple years since I moved to Florida. Brakes are shot, tires are shot. Uh, it's going the way of Patina, was it used to be a really beautiful, beautiful car. Still real nice, rust free. Uh, headquarters put on at one time, as you can see here from the lead work. I'm taking it over to the shop. Be the next project, getting the disc brake conversion probably, and uh, figuring out why the brakes aren't doing what they're supposed to. And, Got new tires for it, so. And a new cruiser, so then my brother had the 55, I've got the 56, dad's got this 57 wagon. All good. All right, guys, we're on our way. There's a 56 Nomad in my back window. Moving some stuff around. This here car's been in our family for, oh God, I was 13 when we bought it. 12. This is the guy who did the work on my dad's 55 that ended up, ends up now being my brother's bromad. And uh, bought this first, met the guy, he owned a body shop. He didn't do any of the work on this car. He just bought it because he liked them. And then... Uh, Got to know him and said he'd do our my dad's 55. So I was probably 12 when we got this because I think I was 13 when my dad had his done. So, all right, let me focus on driving here. A few moments later, we made it one piece. Now we just got to get it in the garage. That'll be the fun part.
heater in, getting ready to put her on the lift. I'll go over underneath and all the good stuff with you. I think I know what's wrong with the brakes. It's probably rear wheel cylinders, but I gotta do a little checking and seeing and uh, see if we can just go ahead and do a power disc brake conversion on this thing too. Boy, what happened? All of a sudden I'm doing brake jobs left and right. Yes, that's what happens when you start dealing more frequently with old stuff. So, power disc brakes. Get it back running. At the bare minimum, fix the wheel cylinders, drive it the way it is if I have to. Um, but we'd like to do power disc brakes. And got those wheels are going to go on here since that wheel over there is falling apart and they're from 2002 dry rotting and falling apart from sitting around so here we go all right let's give you a close-up tour of the old momad this was my mom's nomad she drove to work in the summers when i was growing up as a kid but this is ma's man i don't know what we call it um my mom's nomad so i'm calling it mom ma's man sat way too long too much to the steering's got some slop in it, a little more than you like from that original aftermarket dealer installed um, power steering, which I'll show you that in a minute. But it it, it typically wears out the, the gearbox, um, that kind of power steering. So the power steering, remove that, that power steering is now back to manual steering and it's got a lot of slop in it. Also, suicide. Suicide brakes with a factory booster from 56. It's all original. That just took a dump and there's no brakes in the field. So if I'm gonna replace all that, I'm gonna do it with a modern dual reservoir, modern booster, new lines, and I might as well go ahead and up these to disc brakes, get myself some quality stopping in modern times. Problem is 14 inch craggers, don't mind them. Love the way it looks. They've been on there for 40 years. Them tires were changed in nine, in uh, 2002. And as you saw in the previous video when we were towing it here, ramping it here, one tire fell apart. So I've been running these on my Blazer. I bought this purposely because disc brakes will not fit behind a 14 inch wheel. I needed something else. So I ran these on, I bought these used. I need a little more polishing, but torque thrust. Aluminum, nice new wheels, 17 inch wheel, a little wider, a little stouter. The backs are a little wider, a little stouter. So that's what we're gonna be doing, but it's gonna be some time. It's gonna be a long process of working on this longer because of finances and time. So what I do have, I took the carb off and used it on something else and then I ended up having to tear it apart and clean it. Just sitting on there right now. Gotta get that hooked back up. This might need exhaust. I'll get it up here in a second. And uh, if it does, I've got some uh, short tube block hugger manifolds that'll go on. An Edelbrock intake that I painted with Harley engine texture paint. Did that a few years ago. I got some different valve covers that'll go on here. Clean this area up. Make it look nice and just respectable. Got a new radiator in it a couple years ago. Uh, and I'm probably, I gotta make sure I have it, but probably gonna convert this to alternator because this thing, when you're driving it, the generator light flickers on and off and it, it barely charges at like 13, which is typical for these things. They just don't work the greatest. And uh, yeah, I'm probably going to clean up some of this and just make it nicer so but it's in really nice shape it's in good condition the years haven't been great to the paint it's old lacquer paint um looks good here but if we get in close it is checked like crazy which is fine we'll do a patina it'll be a patina nomad <laughs> the roof is really i don't know if you can see that I mean, it's turned into sandpaper. 
I mean, it's a 40. I think this car had been painted. The guy that we bought it from said about six years prior to him. Four years prior to him getting it, he had it for two years. So six year old body work. So 46 years, 47 year old paint and body. And just. So I might just uh, break this down, get it a good scuffing to clean it up, and then do a satin clear on it. Uh, you know, Poppy's patina, satin clear. I'm not going to do it until I'm going to do one other vehicle first as a test platform. We'll get to that vehicle later. But it had inexpensive interior done, you know, 30 years ago. Real nice, two tone blue. Got a nice new carpet in it. This here confuses a lot of people. This really hasn't gotten any worse since we bought it. This had, and I'll show you when we get it up in the air, this had a quarter panel put on it at one time in its life due to maybe an accident or whatnot. And that is lead coming through the existing paint, leaching through the existing paint. It either wasn't sealed proper with the proper stuff or it wasn't uh, properly done. Not sure what the question the answer is to that, but it is in the paint, not on the paint. It's been there since the day we bought it. It might have spread a little bit more because I think it was just here, and I think this is more of it coming through. But again, you can see the paint's really. I like it. <laughs> you know me, guys. Me and Patina. So, it did have a bad tailgate. So, when I bought it for mom and dad, second, this is a real deal steel out of Florida. One of the only ones that does uh, re stamps for Nomads and Tri Fives. And uh, got no weather stripping in here, but this is a brand new tailgate because. One we had was really rotted, and we got another one. It must have been an accident. It was so tweaked that the bolt holes wouldn't line up. But you can see through here, just some surface rust. There's really no rot. This carpet piece is what goes on the back of the tailgate here. cover for this setting those in there to work and they need to be they need to be uh cover plated you can see it's brand new from here weathering on the back side that carpet's decent real nice interior wise clean this up because it had a lot of surface rust and painted it with rust inhibitor priming primer just to stop it from doing whatever it was doing there because it was getting pretty crusty from this tailgate rust and all it's pretty typical that the water gets down in there and then uh, rots them out on the bottom for you guys that don't know one of the coolest parts about a 56 chevy one the taillights are neat two this is where you put your gas you turn that molding down it comes, and your gas is in there. That is not custom, that is factory. That's back when things were cool. Gotta make sure that's perfectly straight, otherwise when you ask people to guess where it is, they'll never, they never find it, unless that's crooked. So I had this stored in my shop in Indiana, and I made a mistake. I had it on a four post lift up in the air, and the heater that heated the shop blew down, crossed, and kind of ricocheted off of here and it dried this paint out and flaked it. This was in there when I bought it. And that's bare metal showing through. So I got to figure out something to do with this and it's really flaking all the way down. Put the lacquer, it dries out and then gets really hard to deal with. We got this little rust coming through here from this molding rubbing on the body, surface rust, partly the molding rusting down, but it creates this all the way around. Again, make a great patina vehicle not really much you can do than other than stripping it and the problem with this paint is 
you cannot paint over it with modern paint. It's not like you can scuff this, reshoot it, face clear. It's got to be stripped of bare metal. Expensive. And I'm not going to do it. At least not in the foreseeable futures. Oh, and before I forget, that headliner. So, <laughs> I don't know what that headliner is made out of. But it reminds me of a beach towel. It's like terry cloth or something. And the whole interior was that when we bought it. And as a kid, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I wish they had not got rid of it, but it was getting really worn. Beach towel would if you were sitting on it a lot. We took a lot of trips as kids in this car. And uh, the seats just started getting worn. And then there was no way to really clean them if they got stained. And they were just another day. See how aged that's looking. And it's never been touched as far as sad on it. But yeah, the whole interior was that terry cloth beach towel in a baby blue door panels everything it was sewn um with the original bel air pattern and uh so were the doors and everything i mean it was done very very well but it was 70s 80s uh 70s mid 80s custom yeah thought you get a kick out no we'll take you from the front to the back uh I want to show you something that scared me. That scared me at first. At that, it looked like bent metal. When I first got it back to my place in Indiana, I, I shipped this from Florida to Indiana. And uh, got it up in my four post. Saw that, and I'm like, why didn't Dad tell me there was holes in the floor? Oh, I ain't a hole in the floor. What is that? And over here, like, ah, oh, no. Wait a minute. This is all undercoating, people. And there are some little pinholes. Lockers are good. Um, typical on these Bel Airs is these getting rusty and flaking off undercoating. Flaking off all flaking off undercoating. A little bit of rust back in the corner, not much. Had a floor shift in it at one time, I guess, because it looks like they patched that. It had been cut out pretty shittily, and then somebody had patched it over that. Undercoating there. Rockers, and the rockers are really, really good. Again, undercoating. Thought that was metal peeling and rust, but it's undercoating with bare metal showing. The only cross member that's really bad is this right back corner one. And see these holes in here that's where the water is supposed to drain out it's caught in these there 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 kind of seeing that one there's some dirt up in there this one had a rock in it i'll get you so you can see that better this one had a rock in it Right here. Lo and behold, look where it's bubbling. The water got held up in here. It was unable to drain. Caused that to rust. What we're seeing here to start rusting. Other than that, this frame, floors, and cargo area are in really good shape. It's just hard to see past the gloopy, gloppy undercoating. But it saved it. It did. It saved it. Probably going to have to try to do some type of exhaust on this at one time coming up because you get these little tiny pipes and their uh, weird angle cuts. Make it work. These have been on here for 40-something years. We've never changed them. And if I end up doing different exhaust than that ram's horn, uh, I'll need to do different 
rust. It's in good shape though. Not rusted out or anything. No rust holes. So, and then that power steering I was talking about. So, what it used to have is a ram, like a giant shock, like you have on uh, stable steering stabilizers that mounted here, mounted here. You added extra, and that was a hydraulic ram that pushed back and forth to give you power steering. And by doing that, where's the gearbox out eventually? That gearbox has got a ton of slop in it. I ain't grabbing it because it's really greasy right now and I just washed my hands. But um, it adds a lot of slop to that. So I think what I'm going to do is buy a power steering box. I don't want to. I want to do I want to do power steering rack again like I did on my brothers and dads. But that all comes down to what kind of exhaust I'm going to running because I can't I'm not spend any money on all the stuff they I learned my lesson on that one. It all is a cheap kit, but cheap kit that cost a lot in extras. Make it work. Oh. They want like seven hundred dollars for a new gearbox. And I found a no-name one. Use it. Everybody uses the 500 series gearbox. I don't know what it's actually from, but I have found a no-name one that has a really good, uh, got really good reviews. About 370 bucks. I have a power steering pump. I believe I have a specific bracket to. Uh, Run that pump on a tri five because we did a different one on my brother's. But well, we saw the bracket from what we were going to do on his. We still have the hoses from that. All I need is the gearbox. First things first, it's got no brakes. So we're going to be doing this is the new project. It's going to be coming here soon, shortly. Stocking up a few projects on video because I can only do an hour here, hour there, and you know, when you edit this stuff, to try to get a an hour video or a thirty to forty-five minute video, it takes six, seven, eight hours of actually working on stuff. Dance it down to the bare necessity. So I'm working on a few things, and I'm I'm working on one, and then I'm working on the other, and, and wait for parts on the other, and then I got another project going on that I'm working on. So I got like three things I'm working on that we're going to be doing videos on. So hopefully videos will be coming out soon here. Um, if you're watching this, obviously a video did come out, but this is the introduction into the 1956 no Chevy Nomad, known as Mamad. Osmad. I'm mad. I'm Osmad. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. It'll be in the name and the title if uh, when I figure it out. All right. Thanks for stopping by, guys. And uh, looking out for the coming videos where we're going to do a disc brake swap on this and uh, a few other things. It's going to be on the channel off and on. And uh, not going anywhere as far as I'm concerned. Uh, don't plan on selling it. Nice to have my brother driving his 55 Nomad, which was my dad's. Me driving this, which was my mom and dad's, but my mom's, and uh, which is, you know, my brother's got the 55, I got the 56, and my dad's still driving his 57 four-door wagon. We can roll into a car show. Um, it's car show season. More car show videos will be coming as long as it ain't raining. Tomorrow was supposed to be a big car show that we were going to go to at least look at. You're born one that I post videos of, but it's a 90% chance of extreme storms tomorrow, so it's probably not going to happen. But we'll try to get... 55, the 56, and the 57 all in a row to a couple of car shows this year. Together, with the family driving them, and uh, dad can break to everybody that these were his cars for 50 something years. 40, 50 years. It'll be neat. That's the plan. Come along for the ride. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that like and notification bell as we post videos on this. You'll be notified. And you'll get to see the changes and, you know, just the overall, somebody enjoying a resurrected ride. Remember, guys, don't wait for your hot rod to be perfect to enjoy it. Do a little something. Get it out, drive it around. Get it back in the shop. Do the next thing. Keep yourself motivated. 
All right, guys, keep the shiny side up. Branch it.